they feeling like I'm academics. Can't ride no way. Did I play this yet? You could tell they were. Okay. Well, we talked about the 6 9 stuff already. Did we talk about... Sean Combs tried to kill a record executive? If you've been following the headlines, a past incident involving the embattled rapper and producer has come into the spotlight. The criminal case, but also... But then, his mother, Janice, gets published for the world to see. With that scene still there. Now, there's a back and forth about how this happened. Some say... This was intentional to stir up controversy. Stout says he never got instructions from Combs or Bad Boy Entertainment on what to do exactly, but the video aired. And then Stout says, Sean Combs calls him, starts screaming at him, hangs up. Then Stout says a Bad Boy executive calls him back and says that an angry Sean Combs. This was about, I think the um, one mic video. No, no. Hate Me Now, I think it was Hate Me Now. This was Hate Me Now with Nas. And um, I, I think Diddy had a problem with some depictions that included Jesus or something. Now, there's a back and forth about how this happened. Some say central. Now, Walker, again, the pastor, reportedly calls Stout saying, make this edit. The problem is, oh, is one it. way or another, that video gets delivered to MTV. Here we go. Cross, while wearing... I'm talking about Interscope record executive Steven Stout. And this all centered around the music video Hate Me Now by yeah. artist Nas. Now Diddy was set to make an appearance in that music video. In fact, it was reported at the time that Sony had to pay an extra $14,000 just to accommodate Combs' request to be in that video. But the issue was that Diddy was to be seen crucified on a cross while wearing a crown made of thorns. And the story goes that Combs, he had already proved that. But then his mother, Janice Combs, and his pastor, Ezekiel Walker, they weren't too happy with what was being portrayed here. And Combs had reportedly then called Stout saying, delete this, delete this. Oh, his, his pastor told him, bro, you feeling yourself too much if you think you're going to be on a cross being crucified, almost trying to symbolize like you're Jesus. You're not Jesus, fool. Theme. But apparently, one way or another, that video gets delivered to MTV, which, by the way, if you don't remember, MTV was huge with music videos back in the day. I don't know if it is currently. I haven't been following it. I feel like all they do is like reality shows. But anyway, that's a separate conversation. It went to MTV, Music Video Central. Now, Walker, again, the pastor, reportedly calls Stout saying, make this edit. The problem is Stout says he didn't have the authority to make a change like that. So what happens? the video gets published for the world to see with that scene still there now there's a back and forth about how this happened some say this was intentional to stir up controversy stout says he never got instructions from combs or bad boy entertainment on what to do exactly but the video aired and then stout says sean combs calls him starts screaming at him hangs up then, Stout says, a bad boy executive calls him back and says that an angry Sean Combs is on his way to his office. Just minutes later, and this is apparently captured on CCTV surveillance footage, it captures Combs and his associates entering the New York office of Universal Music Group where Stout had worked. And Stout says Combs comes into his office and then just punches him in the face and proceeds to beat him with a telephone. From there, he claims that Combs' associates, they jump in on the attack too, kicking him, punching him, hitting him with a chair. They apparently throw his desk over. They mess up the entire office. This is a vicious, vicious attack. And Stout actually had to be taken to the hospital. As Stout told the LA Times at the time, I was laying there on the floor bleeding. My jaw and my head were all swollen. I couldn't move my arm. It was a traumatic experience. And in the middle of it, I didn't know exactly how to feel. I was upset embarrassed, scared, angry. As far as I'm concerned, this was an attempt on my life. The only reason I'm not dead is because they missed. He went on to say, if this kind of behavior is allowed to go on unpenalized, 
It'll be like an invitation for extortion in the music business. If somebody can get away with walking into the headquarters of the world's biggest record company and beating up a senior executive over a disagreement, I guarantee you this is going to be a great business for criminals to thrive in. Now, Stout reported this to police, and they investigated. And you know what? Combs ended up turning himself in. He was arrested really? on felony assault charges. This didn't just go away. Well, kind of, because here's what happened. Combs ended up pleading guilty to a lesser charge of harassment. He was ordered to undergo an anger management program, and he wound up paying Stout $500,000 in an out-of-court settlement. It was reportedly, though, not as a form of compensation per se, but it was labeled as producer and management fees. And considering Stout was looking for $12 million for the attack and Sean Combs was facing years in prison if he was convicted at a trial, got to say, this was a pretty good deal for Sean Combs, considering what was alleged. Now, Combs released a statement at the time. <laughs> Beats by Puff. <laughs> Yo, how many niggas has Diddy beat up, man? J. Cole, Drake, Steve Stout. The only person he ain't give a ass whooping to is Tupac and Suge Knight. Let's keep it a beam. That nigga, that nigga did he really a bad boy, man. Time saying, I'm glad to get this whole incident behind me, and it's now time for me to do what I do best, concentrate on my album, and give back to my fans. Now, obviously, we're talking about an intentional attack here, but... Personal injury cases, they can take all forms. And if you should find yourself in that position where you're injured, you need to know your legal rights. Holmes bail. And it was addressing the idea that there is not just one victim in this case. Sure, there is one victim. Okay, man. Anyway, uh, did y'all see Shine speak on this again? L listen to Shine and Stephen A. So talking to, to Shine and they're talking about Shine. They want to know about Shine himself from his perspective, what he experienced. So tell us what exactly did you experience? People are going to go to December 27, 1999. They're going to look at things like that. They want to know what happened to Shine himself. In your words, what happened to you? Well, you know, in, in my words, I, I said, uh, so many years ago, back in 2001, I knew that was my first double XL cover. I had about six. And the cover is Death Before This Honor. It was me talking about not snitching on Diddy and not getting him in trouble to get myself out of trouble. I said that um, you know, 20 odd years ago. So I've always maintained in every interview I did until recently when I healed and I moved on and I forgave. But for years, I was saying, you know, what a creep I thought he was and how he destroyed my life. And I, at one point, I thought he was the devil. But because of the power of Diddy, which is so loud as far as a pop culture icon, nobody listened. Um, so I moved on and, and, and I, I pivoted my life to healing, to forgiveness and to taking accountability for what I can control. And I can't control what someone did to me decades ago. I can't control them not wanting to pay reparations, not wanting to, to make right. You know, that people say, oh, Diddy gave me millions to, to go to jail. Nothing. Probably made uh, a two what I thought were offensive uh, contributions over the last 20 something years, which led to a breakdown in, in the relations. Um, but I moved on. So, so yes, was I the sacrificial lamb? Of course. Did I take the fall? Yes, there was no quid pro quo. There was not, listen, we're going to have $10 million waiting for you when you come out. I'll just do the right thing. I did that on my own. Uh, you know, and, and, and I've been saying that. It's not, it's not anything new. What? But in the documentary, right. just like in this interview, I can't say to you, Stephen A., I don't want to talk about uh, Diddy. But it, uh, Shine is so interesting. Now, granted, let's put the obvious up, up, up front. We believe that Diddy victimized and took advantage of a lot of people, right? And we're not only just talking sexually, we're talking about, you know, maybe people who took the fall for him, people who took blame and punishment for him, people who um, extended themselves that he could live the life that he wanted to live. The whole 1999 thing, though, like, I feel like Shine is always, like, Shine, Shine is giving, like, a mixed message. It's like he's saying that, yeah, I didn't have a deal with Diddy, 
that I'm gonna take the charge. But I thought I was doing the right thing by taking a charge. But I ain't I ain't do it. He did it. But I took the charge. And I thought by me taking a charge, he was gonna hold me down after I took the charge, but he ain't hold me down. Uh okay. I mean, I understand what he's saying, but it's like that's separate from him saying, yo, I was framed. No, it's not like you you're saying you took the charge. Like you 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 took this to let him free. Which is it? Did you get framed or did you take the charge for the guy? Let's talk about me becoming the prime minister. Let let you know I can't talk about only what I want to talk about. I have to be fair and transparent to the audience. Uh, but I, I I've been saying the same thing if you do your research. Uh, but he, listen, he also mentored me uh, in in the year or so we spent working together to to make one of the greatest hip hop albums ever. You know, I learned a lot as far as being an entrepreneur, uh, as far as being, you know, a disruptor and a trailblazer. Um, and so I got exactly what I went to, to the university. By the way, anything but a norm thing for the 10, she says, uh, this is crazy because he came out the club with a hot gun in, in the hand. He came out the, the club with a hot gun into the hand of the police. Oh, really? That's kind of interesting. So how does he, the, did he pass him the gun initially? He, wait, didn't both of them shoot though? Supposedly both of them shoot. The woman is just claiming the bullet that shot her in the face came from Diddy's gun. Uh, a, a bad boy. Uh, with this. Somebody said, does mentored mean the egg test? <laughs> y'all think, think Shine passed the egg test, bro? Diddy as professor uh, when it comes to entertainment and, and even things that I've been able to carry with me as far as work ethic, as far as, you know, manifesting the greatness that you want to achieve. You know, so there, there were some positives. Um, but obviously, um, going to jail for 10 years when that could have been avoided or it's someone that, you know, my mom entrusted, you know, our 19-year-old son that they would do right by me, um, you know, to, to, to send me to prison uh, when we could have avoided that. You know, there's nothing we can ever do to change that. And so when I'm telling the story, I can't whitewash that. I can't sanitize. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, Stevie J spoke on, on, on Diddy's... Um actions which by the way i i have to believe this is a part of a overall theme of i think the family and, and i don't know who's the the brain trust here or if diddy's quarterback in this from jail or maybe the lawyers are quarterback in this i think they're realizing that yo the media it, it's impossible for him to have a fair trial right now most likely someone on that jury is gonna have watched or seen a million pieces of news about Diddy being incarcerated and these wild ass like elements to it, right? So the, whoever ends up on the jury is probably gonna be already swayed to think that nah, he did that shit. It appears that it feels like the family or maybe the lawyers have directed the family and friends to say, hey, listen, we need some positive press. Because that's the only reason why I could see why, for example, um, Stevie J is on this documentary that, is on this documentary that uh, TMZ is doing called, I believe, I think it's called like the downfall of Diddy or something like that, right? Um, TMZ documentary on Diddy. Yeah, it's called the downfall of Diddy inside the freak offs. Why was your friend appear on a, on a documentary like that? Unless he's appearing on it to try to help change the narrative, right? We see the sons, it, it, the kids aren't really doing a good job because they're, they just keep partying. But, you know, I think they had good intention when they're like, yo, we're taking over his Instagram. We're going to show you like some 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 good times. Right. And, this, and, you know, Christian Combs took over the Instagram. He posted a, like a few things. It's just music videos. So I don't know if that necessarily helps. Right. But, yeah. Anyway, um, listen to Stevie J. And you tell me if this helps or hurts Diddy. Video effect the way or alter the way you look at Diddy. Well, you know, it really threw me for a loop because as I've always stated, I always think about and, and talk about the things that I know to be true about Sean Combs. 
And, you know, after I saw the video, I went and saw him in Miami and we had a, a conversation. And I let him know how affected I was by that. And, you know, I, I didn't know that he had that in him to do that. My behavior on that video is inexcusable. I take full responsibility. So, my conversation with him was basically like, yo, like, you you one of my um, my heroes out here. You hurt me with that. And what did he say back to you? I mean, it was pretty much, you know, a brotherhood moment that I'd rather not discuss right now, but, you know, it was a real emotional moment. Can you give me some sense of it? Because I think it's important to know how he was dealing with friends like you when you suddenly see something like this that you say comes out of the blue. He was hurt that that, that video came out. It crushed him, you know, because he's like, yo, my daughters and my mom gotta see this. And I'm like, yeah, your friends gotta see it too. So it, it really hurt him that that that, that was, um, the video came out. That's interesting. It hurt him because the video came out or because of what he did on the video? I'm See, that's where the trip up is. This is why you can't really speak on that, right? Because now it gets into this whole slippery slope of is Diddy remorseful of how he acted and, you know, he had self-identified a particular period during his life as a dark time? Is he, is he more embarrassed and really regretful how he acted during that dark time or is he um remorseful and regretful that the video came out right really hurt him that 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 was um the video came out that's interesting it hurt him because the video came out or because of what he did on the video i believe both hurt him the, what he did on the video he couldn't believe that that was the darkest point in his life and he had to relive that and see that again with his ex-girlfriend of 10 years. Who wants to see themselves beating on a girl in a video? I think that would kind of like hurt all of us, any man. It sounds like seeing the video was the headline as opposed to what he did to her. No, I, I, I wouldn't say that, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I just know that he was in a dark place in his, his life, as he described to me, and that, you know, he was just doing a lot of drugs and it was just, it was just dark for him. Mm. Yeah, yeah th th these people that they're sending out to try to make Diddy um, sound a little bit of human, um, it, it won't work. I, I could tell you this now. The reason why it won't work is that we want to hear you speak to not the pain of what Diddy's going through, even if you think he's being persecuted. We want to hear about the pain of the alleged victims, right? Yeah, look at my dogs. They're like crying like a like bunch of bitches and shit. Sorry. Uh, I don't know if you can hear it. Um, yeah, so, like, his friends are going to be like, yeah, nah, he was fucked up over that, man. Yo, like, th that was just a bad video. Well, really what people want to hear is you empathize with Cassie. Like, they don't want to hear you tell them, like, oh, man, yeah, Diddy had to relive that moment. Well, what about Cassie, nigga? Like, what what about Cassie? And I think that's the reason why this attempt to try to help garner some sympathy or or have people, like, maybe given, you know, be like, oh, man, maybe we should maybe we should give this guy a chance. Maybe he's not that much of a monster. Maybe he does have some feelings and empathy. It's hard to do it when... You're going to get tripped up like how I believe Stevie J got tripped up. Okay, cool. So you're, you're telling me he was distraught because the video came out. Oh, yeah, now he had to go through that. Nobody wants to see that. But what about the victims? Uh, 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 uh. Exactly, right? So I don't know if this is necessarily going to work, but I do think, you know, the, the lawyer shut up. The lawyer can't speak anymore. So we're going to start seeing a lot more friends and family. We already seen uh, the mom wrote a letter. Remember the mom wrote a letter like, hey, my son. And here's the thing. Here's the angle I think all the family's trying to do. This is the angle to try to defend Diddy. They got to admit that he was tripping because he's on video doing some wild things. So they have to admit, yeah, you know, he was tripping, but he's not a monster. And, and it's kind of like, hey, listen, let's not throw out the baby with the bathwater type of thing to say, yo, he might have fucked up here. And yes, we're disappointed. We're not co-signing that video. But the man that we know 
is not a man that is fully abusive and it's not a man that's done these other things, okay? Not because we see one video means that he spiked a bunch of drinks. He never did none of that type of stuff. And I think that's what they're trying to do. But it's hard for people to get past that when the ultimate thing is it just feels like we're hearing about his mindset and how it's affecting him with the video. And we're not hearing real true, hey, I treated this woman like shit. Hey, this like we're not hearing any empathy for the victims. We're hearing empathy for this being brought up again in the situation he's in. So that's the problem if you ask me. Uh, r Really quick, what's about to open up? Oh, 